everybody. Welcome back to the 832 podcast. Today, we are continuing our series on the parables of Jesus with the parable of the wedding banquet. And you can find that in Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. So I'm going to go ahead and read that for y'all. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent out his slaves to summon those invited to the banquet, but they didn't want to come. Again, he sent out other slaves and said, Tell those who are invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went away, one to his own farm, another to his business. And the other seized his slaves, treated them outrageously, and killed them. The king was enraged, so he sent out his troops, destroying those murderers, and burned down their city. Then he told his slaves, The banquet is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go to where the roads exit the city, and invite everyone you find to the banquet. So those slaves went out on the roads and gathered everyone they found, both evil and good. The wedding banquet was filled with guests, but when the king came in to view the guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed for a wedding. He said to the, he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, Tie him up hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. More light fare for the discussion today. <laughs> light fare? I, I, I was joking. This is pretty heavy stuff. Yeah, I was. I was oh. The thing that really just uh, got me, though, was when it said, he said to him, uh, Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. And then he was thrown into the outer darkness. Um. Well. Let's consult the oracle on that one. Because. And here's why it, like, it rattled me a little bit. Because well, I've always been taught. Come to Christ as you are. Come to God as you are. And maybe coming to God as you are. Doesn't mean you have wedding clothes. But then again. That's definitely not what it means. Whatever it means. <clears throat> the issue is the significance of the wedding garment that's kind of lost on us. And so, um, I mean, I, I can say if you're holding a black tie affair mm -hmm. and somebody shows up in a t-shirt and jeans, they're disrespecting your wishes and the conditions upon which they invited you to their house. Right. And <clears throat> even better, if I said, hey, we're having a costume party and someone shows up without, like... Their costume was a t-shirt that they wrote on. I'm going to be a little bit ill about that. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, look at this guy over here with full leather everything and real metal swords. And then there's you. Get out. <laughs> you know? Right. And so the, 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 the thing here is, isn't that he showed up without wedding clothes. Or, well, it, it's that he did. And by doing that, by showing up without wedding clothes or at least the attempt of wedding clothes um he wasn't taking the invitation seriously right because like i'm gonna assume well I'm, i i'm gonna assume that like a a wedding garment was like a a, a thing every jewish person had who could afford it i mean that's an assumption there's nothing in the bible that says that but 
at the very least, if you're going to a wedding, you know how to dress. So there are footnotes in my Bible. Even better. About this particular thing. And it says, the man without a wedding garment apparently represents the false disciple. Uh, his speechlessness indicates that he recognizes his fault, not that the king, God, is making an impossible demand. Especially since there was a custom of kings providing festal garments for those who needed it but lacked them. The deliberate spurning of the king's offer may be in view here. And so, right, given that there was a custom of like giving people... Like the clothes that they need but don't have, then it, it was it was coming to the party but not receiving God's gifts. Um. Yeah, and okay, uh, this uh, this might be a little bit reaching, but it kind of came to me. You know how um, the blood of Christ covers us all as a covering for our sins. And this guy might be like, I don't need God's grace. Walks in. So here, 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 here's your, here's your God's grace. I'm good. Wait, what? Right. Um. And since the, 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 the tradition is they gave, what they, they were giving what was lacking then you know he refused the offer but tried to come in anyway right because okay so i guess the the the, the picture is there's someone someone at the door handing out coats and he just walks right by without taking one you know it's like here's how we can make you we are offering this so that you will belong. Right. So that you won't feel uncomfortable or so that you won't look out of place. Right. And this guy doesn't care whether he looks out of place and he doesn't he doesn't want the offer. Which <clears throat> goes along with you know what what I told you when not that long ago. I don't you weren't that much younger, but um be very careful in rejecting gifts. If somebody offers you something and you turn it down, it's that is an insult. And the bigger thing you turn down, the bigger the insult. So, you know, the king was aware that he didn't have a wedding garment when he came, but was willing to offer it and provide it. And this guy didn't didn't want it now i'm not saying you know if someone says oh this is just trash i'm trying to get rid of it can you can, do you want it Th that's different than here i wanted you to have this you know or yeah. I, I heard you needed this so here you go you know right. um re 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 and another point is don't reject a gift, <laughs> a mitzvah, you know, a good thing. Uh, but let's let's go like b before that, because that 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 got stuck with me too. But that little bit of context helps right. <clears throat> that they would provide garments, and he just walked right by. So that shows even more dis um, disdain, or uh, I can't think of the right word. Um, disregard there you go for what the what the king was offering everybody right now cause... right and what was actually going on yeah you know he went for a party not for an actual wedding right i'm not sure i i'm not sure how they get like false prophets out of that necessarily. Well, false disciples false disciples oh false disciples yeah see there's a difference there's a difference you're absolutely right right the people who say they're going to follow god but don't actually take in take his word or or, or, or take what's off what he offers for right. the for the kingdom for the for the wedding feast um so first off the servants are the prophets again that's been a consistent thing 
when the king sends out servants, they are, they are prophets. Um, and he sent, he gives them, he gives them three chances. Well, what does it three? Okay. So send servants to him. Verse three says to send servants to callers who were invited to the wedding feast. Um, verse four says again he sent the servants. So everything's ready. Um, okay. So the, he, he gave them two chances. First by telling them himself, or well, sending his prophets to say, "Come on," and then saying, "Hey, everything's great. You should really come." And then they paid no attention, and then. Then they seized the servants and treated them shamefully, killed them. So that's definitely how Israel treated the prophets. So King was angry and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Yep. <laughs> Babylonian exile. And then later the Romans. So. You know, go go to the main roads and invite the wedding feast to the main wedding feast as many as you can. That's where I said, well, then if you go to the Gentiles, then that's how I interpret that. Right. You know, gathered all they found, bad and good. So like apparently it's okay to harvest you know, the wheat and the weed but the weeds will be called by you know for instance uh the guy without the wedding garment right um one thing that they like you know for many are invited but few are chosen i also have a, a footnote in my bible for that it says, uh, many were invited to the feast, but only a minority responded, and of those, some were rejected. Those who remained to the end show that they had, in fact, been chosen from the beginning. Jesus preserved a tension between um, individual response and divine election. And so, <clears throat> we've talked about predestination before. Um, yeah, I'm... I, I, I hardly, <clears throat> I, it seems like, oh, it's, I thought few answer was one, another way this was, but now fewer chosen, that's, um, Well, okay. You'll only be chosen if you're genuinely, you know, devoted to Christ. Right. The only time that they got rejected was when they, one, didn't accept the offer, or two, came and weren't genuinely trying to be a part. Right. Like with that one dude. And so, you know, is... I think it's still fair to say that it's still an individual response and it's the quality of that response of like genuinely wanting to be a part of, uh, of God's kingdom and seeing what uh, he, he can do through you, how you can glorify him with your life, then he just chose you and there was nothing you were going to do anyway. Um, yeah, I think... The best way to describe it is the Lord chooses those who choose him. Right. Or more to the point. Those who authentically keep his commandments and, you know, accept the, the, the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm just, I'm failing at communicating this right now. Because those who faithfully keep his commandments, it's not about the law. Right. However, um, uh, 
And all I had to do to, to you know, be welcome with this this wedding party was, was ac to accept the garment. Yes, show up and accept the garment. Accept the covering. Yeah. The covering. Yeah. Um. So. There, there's a long road between accepting who the Jesus who he said he was and genuinely becoming a disciple. And there's plenty of places where you can stop or get turned around or whatever on that road that can cause problems. I'm not going to say you're not saved unless you're a disciple. I don't, that's not my call. Um, what I am going to say is that you can't uphold false teachings or even, you know, real, make false claims about Christ or have false beliefs about Christ. Well, even, even Christ said, you know, those who, um, teach people wrong or don't hold these commandments will be called the least in the in the kingdom of heaven yeah so that that doesn't sound like you're gonna get kicked out though yeah it's in, in matthew chapter 5 um therefore whoever yeah matthew chapter 5 verse 19 therefore whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches people to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven right so that doesn't sound like the place of wailing and gnashing of teeth, but it's like, okay, you get to sweep the floors, you know, or whatever. Um, so it doesn't say much about the, you know, coming of the kingdom, except that um, it's like a wedding feast. Like, there's that. Um, I don't really know how to... And the church is, is described as the bride of Christ. So... It's certainly important, though, because the, the king was straight up fine to just burn the city down for his wedding. So, for his son's wedding. For his son's wedding. So there's, there's a lot of importance given to that. Um, I will say Jesus' forgiveness is probably our wedding garment. You know, the 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 right and us accepting His forgiveness and actually following through with Him is, you know, us taking on the wedding garment and going to the wedding. Right, and it's actually a great analogy. To people, I mean, a, 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 a depiction that that people don't really understand is that as long as you're in God's grace, you know, God just sees someone he wants at his son's wedding feast. Right, because they brought in the good and the bad mm -hmm. people and like you can put on your own, <clears throat> your, your, your uh, wedding garment and it's, um, it covers whatever rags you were wearing exactly um so, and it wasn't even like quote unquote a bad person um that wasn't wearing the wedding clothes you know it was just a, a dude it wasn't even they didn't specify he was a good or a bad dude it was just well, a dude and later on in the well not later on in, in the uh, footnotes um so it says like 
could represent a false disciple, so someone who is there. But right doesn't really take it seriously. Yeah, and that's that's in some ways it, it might be reaching to to say you know the garment is you know Christ's forgiveness, um, but at the same time that is that, that that does do everything that Christ's forgiveness would or does yeah yeah. So I think that's that's probably pretty solid. Um, yeah, man, this this just it, it's a perfect description of, of Jesus' ministry. Um, the storms went under the roads and got all whom they found, both bad and good. The wedding hall was filled with guests. And the only one that we know got kicked out was just the one who didn't wear the garment. Didn't, yeah, and didn't, really importantly, didn't accept the garment. Right. Um, and so, to me, in my head, this is just the vision I get, is the person who's like, it's okay, God will forgive you. Grace covers all, man. Or... Well, or worse than that, I know church is fun and everything, but I'm going to do my thing. You know, I got a lot of partying to do. I got a lot of things, things to see. And, and it's like, uh, dad's been, had to do a little thing for, I think it was camp or VBS or something about Nicodemus and the, and the conversation that him and Jesus have. And, you know, Nicodemus is like, what must I do to have eternal life? He actually asks, and Jesus says, you must be born again. And that's been so, like, hashed out and interpreted and, and spoken spoken about since then. I've had 2,000 years to work it out that we figure we understand what it means when it says born again. But... If Jesus describes... The process of salvation is being born again. Can you be the person you were before, after? Unchanged in attitude and behavior is what I mean by the same person. No, you cannot be the, the same person. And I think it's fair to say that like, I accepted Christ when I was eight, but I really didn't really get I guess converted until middle school when I started to understand the faith more and whatever because that's when my attitude changed right like there is a clear this is this was Ethan then and this is Ethan now right and so that's that is the true salvation experience not where you say a prayer and get dunked <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Say a prayer and get dunked. It it's it's when you know, you devote your life to it's it's the baptism by fire or the baptism by the you know, the Holy Spirit. That that's what we mean right. by fire by the Holy Spirit. That you're really baptized. Being baptized in water is a great public expression of what of when you've truly accepted Christ. Right. And it's unfortunate for me to say that like that that it, I had the the water baptism and then the fire one. That's generally how it happens. That's that that's the accepted order. Okay. Excuse me. Um well, actually it makes sense cuz it's a, the the water baptism is your initial connection, right. your initial saying this is what I'm going to do. And then the baptism by fire is when you actually do it, or when it's right. actually done in your life. So right. that that makes sense. And so, I'm a. Come as you are, expect to be born again. Right. 
Well, it's like every other relationship too. Yeah. You come to to each other as you are, and then by being with each other for like extended amounts of time, y'all end up changing. Mm -hmm. And that's just how it is. Not by and it's a healthy relationship when you don't try and force the other to change to you, but it's when you try and change to better help and love and care for the other person. Right, and it's like well, if they're really compatible with you why should you have to change well that's nonsense because there's no such thing as 100 percent compatibility in fact such a thing would be bad for you and you might not even want that person necessarily because they don't challenge you or uh, help you get better mm -hmm. um, so there's that our, our entire culture's view of love and relationships is is tainted and evil everything about it Everything about how we're supposed to get into relationships and how we're supposed to treat relationships and how the love between two people even works. Society at large is completely fallen and corrupted in this in this regard. And it's it's ruined the, the family. It's you know, skyrocketed people in bad situations getting it worse. It's it's terrible. I, I was I, I I say that because I bought into the lies, you know, for the first half of my life. I completely bought into the lies that um, it's about how you feel, not you know what you do, and um, that that ruined my first marriage. My second marriage was an abusive situation, um, emotionally and physically. So I can't. I can't feel bad about getting away from that. And, um, that there was some, um, unfaithfulness on her part and unfaithfulness on my part. And so, you know, that one needed to die, <laughs> but, um, I learned about myself that you know there's I it, it's not about what you find it's about what you build like you're saying and that I can be much better served learning how to be the best um, man for her <clears throat> not by sacrificing my integrity but by keeping it by, you know, not, not, not by letting go of who I am, but by enhancing who I am, you know, cutting off the rough spots, burning off the bad bits, you know, the, that's, that's the important note here. Right. So. Yeah. I remember talking to people at school about my faith and whatever, and like, I was like, I was talking about how I think about it and like how I think about it is that you, you end up changing to be better for God. Right. You know? And they're like, well, why would I change? It's like, oh, you're perfect? There's nothing wrong with you whatsoever? Right. And of course, like the, the main example is like, well, what? Because like with the, 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 the gay question, it, and they're like, well, why should I change who I love? Or whatever. Or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> I said, we're called to love everybody. We're not to have, um, well, we're not told to have sexual relationships with just anyone. Right. And that's, that, that's the greatest lies that, um, sexual relationships were instituted by God to create families. That is why you were allowed to have a sexual relationship, is to make a family. And the wedding or marriage is an official, sanctified ritual by which that relationship is recognized and initiated. And it has such a solemn importance to, to cultures that a wedding was a religious event 
in every culture until just recently. Yeah. So that's how important it is. But it's not about being with the one you love. That helps. It's not even about who you love. It's about creating. It's about learning to love another human being. Uh, truly unconditionally. And creating a family with that person. And that, in that sense, it is still about who you love. But we redefine love into a verb, not a feeling. Um, right. It's not about who you have the, 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 the butterflies for. It, it's about, or, or keeping those butterflies. It's about becoming the best person you can be so that that person feels loved. And without a doubt, when that is reciprocal, when both parties are doing that, you can't have anything but a great marriage. Right. But you can't expect the other party to do that because, you know, then you're not having a great marriage. You're not really, you're, you're not doing the thing. Because it's not unconditional. Right. You're, you're, you're expecting something in return. Yeah. It's not completely out of the goodness of your heart. <sighs> and so, um, yeah, people don't like it, but, and, and when we get, get back to why, well, why should I change? It's like, well. If your partner is allergic to peanuts, like deathly allergic, can't stand to be around them, why would you make them a peanut butter and jelly sandwich every day for lunch? Right. Because normally, that's a whatever, that's, that's even a kind thing to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for your, for your spouse. But if they're allergic to peanut butter, that is an evil thing. And so you have to adjust fire so that you can love them better. Right. And, you know, God has chosen... Oh, okay, sin isn't fatal to God. But he has made sin just as incompatible with his presence as someone with a peanut allergy has to peanut butter. Right. Um, you know, the problem is with, in, in, in God's case, his allergy is fatal to you. <laughs> I mean, uh, not, I mean, if you think about it, you know, but it's, 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 it's going. I don't want to go too deep into this analogy, but that's not that it's, it, it. If you're not with God, you're in hell, and that sucks. True. Um, but the, the whole point is, if you claim to love somebody, why would you do something they hate all the time? And that's, that, that's the truth of any sin that we're engaged in, any simple behavior, anything... That's wrong, but but fun that we like. Um, and you know, adultery can be fun, man. You know, just like drugs can be fun. Right. Alcohol can be a lot of fun, but once it's engaging that behavior is more important than your relationship with God then if, if, if you truly want to follow Christ, you're going to have to make a decision. Right. And, you know, that, that's, that's the... part of that mark is to actually put on the wedding garments. Right. Is to actually act like you care and, you know, put on the wedding garments and receive God's covering for you. And then... Because that's the baptism by water. Right. And then to be a part of the wedding and be celebrating is that, is the baptism by fire is you actually acting and truly connecting. Right. And so, yeah.
is, is it what I want or what Jesus wants? And most of the people describing the story were doing what they wanted. So it was what well, I want or what God wants. It's going to be what I want. And then they because they wanted their 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 um their farm their business right they wanted to be they wanted to try being independent uh there's the, there's that and they made those things a higher priority like If the king's wedding feast was going to last forever, then what do you need to worry about your farm for? And if it was going to last a night, you can let you you can leave your farm be for a night. You know, mm -hmm. so you, that that's really where I'm at with that whole thing. Is you know you give to <laughs> give to God what is God's. That's kind of like that's the next thing Jesus talks about. Yeah, he talks about God and Caesar. So I mean, we're not going to get into that, but. The, the whole point is the the Jews rejected Jesus in some cases just as hard as people do today. People are still killed for preaching God's word and offering salvation to, to, to others. Um, you can still die. Yep. And so... Christianity is not a white suburban happy faith, or no, sorry, white suburban uncontroversial faith. It's true, and 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 some some groups are beginning to realize that, and come after it more aggressively, using things like a pandemic to um, try and slit the throat of the bride of Christ. We try not to get too political on the podcast, but yeah, like some of the things that have happened in um in some states, in, not even in like some, like 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 in Canada, there was oh okay yeah, especially Canada yeah. There was a dude who got um um the pastor that got arrested for preaching, even though there uh, it yeah, I mean and he he did break he did break their um. Their COVID guidelines, their their COVID uh, restrictions or whatever in Canada, and by preaching the gospel, what he's supposed to do as a Christian and a pastor, he got arrested, and so uh, we serve a higher power than a government. That's true. And um... so, if you're gonna do it, and if you're gonna still get arrested, then get arrested. Um, but that's what Paul did, but that's what all the disciples but did. Keep in mind that, um, you could get arrested and there are negative consequences nowadays, even, even in like Western countries right. for, um, preaching the gospel under the right, you know, and so anyway, all of that is by, by being a part of the wedding and taking on the, the, the garment, the wedding garb, um, you are being covered by Christ so that you can be a part of the party, part of the wedding, part of the celebrating, of and part of the kingdom of God. And, you know, the people that didn't want to come and the ones that attacked the, the, the slaves, the prophets, were, are still out there, mm -hmm. you know. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent, and it was... It feels like a little bit of a reach to connect it back, but um, yeah. But the 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 the, the person who says, "Why should I have to change?" is exactly the person who would reject the garment, right? <laughs> but still want to come to the party, right? I want all the good things, but I don't want any of the responsibility, which is also a big thing with our culture. Oh, absolutely. Wishful thinking, as C.S. Lewis would like to say, or something. Yeah, it, um, I I get I get really frustrated with a, a lot of things. 
but ultimately I want to be at that wedding. I'm, I'm going, I'm going to put that garment on. <laughs> they hand me one. It's like, would you feel more comfortable in a coat, sir? Absolutely. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's, let's, let's. How was that? So let's pray out. Yeah. Um, hey, dad in heaven. You're awesome. And you're holy. And we love you. And just praise your name. Um, show us your will today. Show us where you're working today. So that your kingdom can come here as, just like it is in heaven. Um, give us the strength and the courage and the wisdom to see and do your work today. And keep us, keep us away from the temptation and forgive us when we fall short. Just like we forgive those who fall short of us. In fact, by the same measure, Lord, hold, hold me to that standard. Let me be as forgiving to others as you are of me. Um, deliver us from, from the enemy. Ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.